In this section, I'll talk about the spatial layout of Seattle Public Library. One of the things the architects did was they conducted extensive analysis uh, concerning the different kinds of activities that go on in a library. And effectively, what they did was they clustered these different activities together and arranged each cluster within what is effectively a separate building and simply stacked these vertically on top of each other. Um, this is very clear in this diagram here that not only shows the vertical stacking of these different platforms but also the interlacing, the alternating between the more public and the more private floors. So let me just rapidly uh, take you through these. We have floor one which is the children's centre and the foreign language centre and this is accessed from the 4th Avenue entrance. The other main entrance is the 5th Avenue entrance and this leads into the living room which is effectively a, an interior public plaza. Between these floors there is uh, the second floor which is a completely private staff floor. The other main public floor is the mixing chamber which is level 5 and suspended between these two is a mezzanine level which is uh, the meeting room level which is level 4. After level 5 we have the book spiral and this is floors 6 through to 9 which takes you up to the reading room on level 10 and finally a completely private administrative floor on level 11. Here we have a, a different view of uh, showing how some of these floors begin to stack up on top of each other. One of the things that's quite noteworthy about this building is that it's actually quite hard to draw and quite hard to diagram. Now the um, original intent uh, about guiding people through the vertical circulation of the building was that this should be done primarily through the use of colour and through oversized signage, so super graphics. So essentially each element of vertical circulation is given its own coded colour, for example the, the piercing yellow um, escalators. I'm now going to very briefly go through uh, axial analysis looking at um, local and global integration as well as choice. So I'll look at each one of these in uh, individually. So just to guide you, this is floor 1 and this is floor 10, the reading room. And here we're looking at global integration and very clearly the most integrated elements in this building are indeed the bank of elevators that actually run right the way through the building from level 1 up to level 10. Uh, I'll also point out that here we have level 5 which is known as the mixing chamber and in all the forms of spatial analysis that we conducted the mixing chamber emerged as being the most integrated floor in the building and this is absolutely in line with the intention of the architects which was to bring people as rapidly from level 1 uh, or level 3 and essentially get them to level 5 as, uh, as speedily and as rapidly as possible. Here we have local integration and again you have the entrance in the 4th Avenue entrance and the 5th Avenue entrance both coming into the building on very strong local integrators. You also have a strong local integrator on level 7 which is interesting because this is the point at which the one-way escalators connecting level 5 to the reading room at level 10. This is the only point that you're actually allowed to get off um, on this uh, sequence of very long one-way escalators. Now looking at uh, VGA analysis, starting off with integration, I'll just zoom in here. Not surprisingly, we're also getting the same bank of elevators emerging as strong integrators but have a look at this we have a staircase here this is actually the most integrated stair in the whole building which actually connects floors three right the way through to the reading room at floor 10. now what's particularly interesting about this stair 
is that when the building was first designed, this stair was actually um, locked and was for emergency egress only. But there was such a, a public outcry that there were simply not enough stairs in this building that eventually this stair was converted to a public stair and was opened. And yet, even today, if you go into this stair, it feels very back of house. It's unfinished painted concrete and it really, you get this very strong feeling that actually you really shouldn't be using this stair. Um, it feels quite claustrophobic and yet if you want to go to level six which is the bottom of the book spiral it's actually the only stair that will take you there. The only other way of getting there is um, elevators. If you don't like elevators, there would actually have been no other way of getting to uh, level six, the start of the book spiral. Here we have uh, looking at uh, area. And again, not surprisingly, um, the um, areas that are uh, most um, with, with the largest field of views are the key, uh, the three key public areas in the building. And this is Level three, which is the living room. Level five, which is the mixing chamber again. And the reading room on level 10. Now just going into a little more detail, looking at all line axial analysis. Here we have level one and the fourth avenue entrance connecting through to that bank of elevators. And here, sorry, bank of, yes, bank of elevators. And here we have the escalator leading to level three. Here we have level three with the Fifth Avenue entrance. And what's particularly significant here is that you will notice that there is no line of sight connecting it to the bank of elevators. In fact, all you can actually see of this bank of elevators when you come in to the Fifth Avenue entrance is a completely uh, blank concrete wall going from floor to ceiling. Equally, here we have the stair that connects all the way up to the reading room. This is not visible from the entrance. Here we have the stair connecting to the fourth floor mezzanine level. Again, this is not visible from the entrance. The only means of vertical circulation that is actually visible from this uh, entrance is the escalators that will take you directly up to level five, the mixing chamber, bypassing level four altogether. Here we have level four. And again, what you're seeing here is another pattern of trying to move people through level, fl level four. This is from three, takes you right the way through up to level five. So even this floor is about this strong route of taking people through level four up to five as rapidly as possible and this cross axis connecting the uh, elevators. And finally, we have floor five. This is where all routes converge. This is where everyone is intended to arrive at as their first point of destination with the uh, escalators coming from uh, level three below the bank of um, elevators here, the stair coming up from level four, so one of the things we actually did when we were in Seattle was we conducted an interview with the local architect and he made some very interesting comments. Firstly, parts of the circulation system are intentionally position, positioned to be unconventional. Uh, he also um, told us that the orientation of that bank of elevators switched repeatedly during the design and he agreed that the Fifth Avenue entrance might logically seem to be more prominent and in which case, yes, maybe the elevators are oriented the wrong way around. He also said that the intention of the escalator linking the living room floor to the mixing chamber floor was absolutely about prioritizing access to what they considered to be the main hotspot, the key point in the building. And that the fact that floor four was effectively ignored was irrelevant because this was only ever seen as a niche destination. Now, in reality, the way the building is working today, it's very clear that the meeting room floor is not actually a niche, niche destination and therefore uh, can present the user with significant navigational problems. So what is the reason for the wayfinding problems in Seattle Public Library?
Firstly, it's the irreversibility of routes. The fact that it's possible to travel from A to B through one route and one mode. But in order to travel back again, you're actually unable to retrace your route. And quite often you need to actually make a change in your mode of traveling. So for example, you go from A to B by escalator. To go from B to A, you have to go by elevator or stairs. Then there's the fact that the escalators shoot past floors without letting people off. And it isn't always apparent how to get to a floor that is visible, but apparently inaccessible. Then there's the fact of the non-alignment of the floor plates, which adds to people's overall spatial disorientation. And finally, the fact that the main vertical circulation elements are not visible from the main entrances.